Dollar so I set my motivation by really pledging myself to do whatever I possibly can to attain the pace, the, the pure state of enlightenment in order to benefit all living beings. And knowing that, that, that in order to do that, I must uh, be able to perfectly train in the practices of the, the Bodhisattva path. And to train in them, I need to have a good understanding of them. Therefore, I need to be able to rely on an unmistaken presentation of those trainings. And so it is with this in mind that I'm here this morning to listen to a teaching from uh, just such a text called The Bodhisattva's Way of Life by the great master Matt Shantideva. <coughs> Similarly, I visualize in the space in front of uh, the one who is in essence my own root guru, uh, skillful in means, uh, greatly compassionate in the aspect of Shakyamuni Buddha, who has uh, one face, uh, two arms, two hands, uh, with the right hand uh, in the earth touching mudra, and the left hand in the meditative equine poise mudra holding an arms bowl filled with nectar. <laughs> And similarly, I visualize in the space all around me all kind mother sentient beings without exception, uh, beginning with our parents, family, those who are close to us. Uh, again, the, the, the three aspects of the uh, enemy, uh, uh, friends, those who are neutral to us, and so that we have this uh, notion that all sentient beings are included without exception. What what and then we again bring our attention to the figure in front. We see that the Buddha is marked by a um, syllable at the crown and a uh, at the throat and a uh, hung at the heart center. Uh, from that hung at the heart center, light rays emanate going into all pure realms, inviting wisdom beings and empowering deities from there. Uh, they come, the wisdom being dissolved into the central figure, and the empowering deities confer the nectar of empowerment, uh, some of which overflows at the crown, uh, simultaneously approve, uh, uh, spontaneously uh, uh, producing the figure of Akshobhya. <clears throat> Hmm. 
Casoletta, Ranchi Batanja, Sergi Batanja, Tama Kiva, Kulla Tujima Nirima Bachuba, Penta Mata Tanjil, Jems again. What did you tell? Kumash Rangitun, Narazo Sanja Tanjil, Tuke, Lamla Lam, Mobato Sanja Tia. But I can just remember you in the social position we were taken to my summer tangent. And ticket Kumashene, and to beg you, and Kuso to be in the Tibacan, Tobala Tavetava, Izegeteva, Mondoketeva. And the same jangi, and it don't make it not suit and to me to me, you to me, chaba to jig to me. How don't the chaba to jig to me, not so till it, and it misuve, and the ninja to me till a tena chimara, chava to chava short, chava tagi chigay. And it java tamjet at tena to me with tewa, to be good at the to me with tewa tamjet at tena chimara, tewa to chick, tewa short, tewa tagi chick, tena chenna, lama to be a jingle lato so, so what I go by shit. <coughs> so we consider uh, the the qualities uh, of the Buddha, the body, the Buddha's body, speech, and mind. Uh, we consider the, the the qualities of enlightenment itself. The the fact that, that the Buddha is uh, has no fear of any sense of suffering with regards to themselves has completely no fear of being able to uh, uh, solve the issues of all other sentient beings. Uh, their suffering uh, works for uh, all sentient beings without bias and with a mind of great compassion and also works uh, re for sentient beings regardless of whether uh, they receive any benefit or not. And so it's these, these qualities that we are uh, admiring and to, to, to the extent of our own understanding, we contemplate uh, these enlightened qualities, and from that, then develop this sense of uh, a trust and faith, faith, pure faith, the faith of conviction, and manifest faith in in the Buddha, in the qualities of enlightenment, and then considering also uh, the sufferings uh, that all sentient beings have to undergo in cyclic existence, the, the suffering of suffering, the suffering of change, and particularly uh, the suffering uh, of pervasive suffering. This is kind of becomes unbearable for us to consider how sentient beings have to inevitably go uh, into this kind of a pervasive suffering uh, uh, just by being born in psychic existence. And this develops the sense of uh, compassion, of really feeling the needs of <coughs> sentient beings and wanting to relieve them of their suffering. And how wonderful it would be if we could uh, relieve all sentient beings of suffering and the causes of suffering. May, may this be the case. I will see to it that this is the case. So Guru Devi, please bless me uh, to make this so. Similarly, when we consider uh, wanting to place all sentient beings in happiness, how wonderful it would be if all sentient beings had happiness and the causes of happiness. Uh, may this be the case. I will see to it that it is the case. So Guru Devi, uh, please bless me to make this so. <laughs> So we have Dan Andrews. Oh. The Premier, Gana, Dan Andrews. Oh. Gola do eh? <laughs> <laughs> Not him, he's mine. <laughs> I can't take it. <laughs> uh, so <clears throat> yeah, what that, what the nation is, what the compassion, what the compassion, that can judge you. That the day you may use, and it can judge you. Then they get any press that to make hundred Java, they want hundred Java, and also the chicken cigar to do, and a rangy chair mother water tap, some the tamjas and some the chigia, they watch them to make hundred Java chit to your mother. But the name of that day, then they chat to a new one sooner to Santa, then they chat to a rangy to Jack come down, maybe some of Paul and your chita was to chin in it, came at one another chat to a member in the water, then they chat to a suit on it. Some did the two lamla umbats of a sign about the local my tuna tattoo. Then the Congo combined Madonna Tamad and a Toba Chigi, some like it, and the same get. 
<clears throat> and so they're just contemplating, you know, how wonderful it would be to remove all suffering and to place all beings in, in, in happiness and to develop things, therefore, these levels of compassion and <clears throat> love for all sentient beings. And to see how this is uh, something uh, really necessary for me to try to do, to really uh, bring uh, the, the kind of like relief from suffering on the one hand and the endowment of, of happiness on the other to all sentient beings. Um, but I, I kind of realized that I know I can't even do that for <clears throat> one sentient being. Uh, if I look around and see uh, who has the capacity to be able to do that, I can only see it's that from that enlightened perspective where the Buddha has the knowledge of individual personalities, dispositions, karmic and so on, uh, karma and so on, so they can really tailor the needs uh, to the needs of all sentient beings. And therefore, I see how it must be the case that I want, to, I have to attain that state of enlightenment if I'm genuine about wanting to benefit all sentient beings. Okay. And in this way, I develop that mind of enlightenment, uh, wishing to attain enlightenment for the benefit of all. so therefore, I really now determined to train on the path. And as we uh, determined in our motivation, I must have an understanding uh, of the path in order to train um, efficiently in it. I must have that understanding and here uh, have that opportunity uh, to really uh, listen and reflect on what is really a manual, uh, a, a kind of a valid manual in being able to generate that mind of enlightenment and proceed along the path uh, with that motivation. And therefore, from that uh, reflection and uh, listening and reflection, I generate the, the triple faith again, of the faith of uh, pure faith, the manifest faith, and the faith of, of conviction. In again, reflecting on and the qualities of enlightenment, what, what are the qualities of Buddha's body, speech, and mind, etc. <clears throat> that, that sense of compassion, that level of compassion, that all pervasive compassion uh, that is uh, necessary uh, to generate for all sentient beings. And with this uh, knowledge as my basis of my faith, uh, I will now listen to uh, these uh, particular instructions on the generation and maintaining of the mind of enlightenment. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> 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 Mm-hmm. 
subject nature. <laughs> And so we begin from where we left off um, last week, and uh, this is then um, looking at the uh, outline um, of a fourth outline, saying, therefore, uh, the necessity, the reasoning behind why it is correct for us to, on the one hand, overcome negativity or abandon negativity, <laughs> and on the other hand, really strive to generate virtue. And this has two subheadings. That is one, if, if it is the case that we uh, gain a, a, a rebirth of leisure and endowment, but then waste it and are uh, led once again to the hell realms, it is, uh, it is kind of akin to being absolutely mindless. And secondly, um, the, why it is correct for us to really reflect on the cause of, of our confusion, of our ignorance, of really getting to at the bottom of that, and then ultimately eradicating. What did you say? That you that to that Sanje soon read Marie de Nikita Marie. Kawanga city, you had a made a rebeck on a ten of money, Kawanga in yet too much. And a Kawanga city, you know, and a tea, and a chigger, Caso de Kawati, Sanete, and two carriers in a young way meet. To take a numsat, then take a numsat Yamusia. And a dealer, ten dealer, ten, and a tata sozo with Neve, and Lieutenant Lieutenant Kabachin by Hakoye. And the Kevatakatuka that Responsible, so this uh, particular point here of uh, this idea of having attained uh, rebirth with leisures and endowments and then uh, really wasting it, not gaining any benefit from it, but being led again uh, to the lower realms like the hell realms, it's, uh, to say, it's akin to being mindless. So, you know, we, we have to kind of, we have been kind of a well versed on, on the benefits of, of what is kind of really important about having attained that basis of a precious human rebirth and of really recognizing that, uh, you know, to get that full import, I think there has to be an understanding and acceptance of past and future lives and, uh, to get the meaning of that, you know, not just because it's something that the Buddha said, but rather we've established it through a reasoning uh, from our own side. And then, you know, knowing that uh, with that kind of a long duration of past and future lives that issues such as virtue and negativity are 
quite significant. Um, and that, that leads us to an understanding of and an, an acceptance of the law of cause and effect of how uh, so important it is that the virtues, uh, the imprints that we lay down are on our mind have far reaching effects and that uh, we should really bear this in mind. And that on that basis, then we really see that the precious human rebirth is a very special basis on which uh, we can attain, achieve all temporary and ultimate goals or our purposes. And so temporary meaning that we have not just kind of like more uh, well-being in this life, but specifically uh, we lay down the foundations for a positive future rebirth, a higher rebirth uh, as, a, as, a, as a human being or a celestial being. And, and then training in the higher trainings and we aim for uh, the more ultimate benefits like liberation or uh, ultimately um, the omniscient um, state of enlightenment itself. And so that in short, that uh, this precious human rebirth of leisures and endowments forms the basis upon which we can fulfill the goals or the aims or the purpose of our, both ourselves and others. And this is uh, so important. Therefore, we have to ask the question, how best is this particular opportunity to be used? How can I use my life in a non-mistaken way, in a fully responsible uh, way? And this, this means really we have to try and take the essence uh, of this opportunity from. And it, but if we are to, to blow that opportunity, end up again in the lower realms, you know, even having understood all this, uh, that would mean uh, it's that's what it's mean by uh, mindless being mindless and kind of like really you know how could you let that happen basically it's kind of like a mindless kind of a point of view so this 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 particular point has a very very important meaning <laughs> And so uh, the verse number 26 and the first half of 27 make this point. Having found by some coincidence this beneficial state that is so hard to find, if now, while able to discriminate, I once again am led into the hells, then as though I were hypnotized by a spell, I shall reduce this mind to nothing. ตาตุซันจิกะไซกุมาพอตุตุตุเกเกเนเปตรันติญิกะตุนทาจิมาตุตุเกเนเยมะยิซะตุนจิเวอะเนเพมเบซะเตนเดเกเนเกะซะเต
so I think talking about how difficult it is to attain this the basis of leisure and endowment in the form of a precious human rebirth, and then how meaningful it is uh, once we have found it. You know that here we talk about how difficult it is to attain uh, a human rebirth in terms of cause, in terms of example, in terms of reasoning, and uh, to uh, be able to attain it then, how meaningful it is, because as it is, as we just said, it is the basis upon which we can attain the state of peerless enlightenment, how we can fulfill this, the, the purpose of self and others. And, and here we are, you know, we kind of like recognize that we have leisures and endowments, how amazing that is. It's kind of saying here, as if by some chance that we, 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 we found this great advantage. And, uh, and, uh, and therefore, you know, to really kind of say, if we were to, um, to, to, to correct that opportunity again, you know, uh, it would be crazy. So we have somehow attained uh, this precious human rebirth. We have accumulated uh, the necessary outer and inner qualities to lead there. We have laid down some imprints for uh, the development of patience, of generosity, of, of good ethical conduct that lead to this particular state. And that, um, that here we have uh, that great basis now in which we can work. So if we have that plus, you know, we have been um, instructed in what it is we need to do and what it is we need to avoid doing. Uh, we have a, an understanding even at that level, but we kind of like really waste that by ending up being led again into the, the hell mm -hmm. realms. You're kind of saying there is a complete lack of conscientiousness there, isn't there? There's kind of like such a, a, a an absence of reasoning uh, that it is like as if you were being influenced by a sorcerer's spell, like I said, it's like a black magic, where you're kind of stunned into having no feeling whatsoever, just kind of mindless state, um, no reasoning, no anything. It's like saying here also that, that it's like your your heart has become um, uh, a metal, like iron, like a, this, this is the, the way it is. And it's kind of like really hard to understand, hard to figure out. Ducks, long like children, they You know, saying it's like those who are addicted to drugs, kind of rendered into that kind of mindless state. Oh, sorry, sorry, some uh, relative is, is calling. <clears throat> Oh, that dear Cassadia. Because I don't see young and sure again. What the Redaka do Jalan do semi that do Pedutang in the zoo and Jalan Shan and Soso Sem Namjuni the Pedutan Mamas of Chavo. What that is done, Redang Alazo Chicasso. Reda, 
and so, yes, it's like saying you know, that really somebody who is addicted to drugs in the way that they have uh, an inability to be able to use their own reasoning, use their own minds, they're kind of out of their minds, isn't it? And that's in many ways, too, that somebody who has zero conscientiousness, but is kind of fouling foul or kind of addicted to their own self-cherishing and self-grasping, it's a very similar sort of situation. So it's really yeah. saying here, you know, pull back, understand what you have in terms of a precious human rebirth, understand that very clearly and determine not to waste it, but rather to take the essence of it. <laughs> So really what, what is most important about that is to be able to use our lives and everything in them, in that life, as a dharma, as to turn it into dharma practice. Like, you know, we're like here we have, you know, we are ordinary beings, we're here in a residence in cyclic existence. We're going to be um, confronted by all kinds of good, bad, and indifferent situations. Uh, what we have to become skillful at is to be able to see them all as conducive conditions for the spiritual practice, to take them all on into our own path, into our practice. That is really the, the key thing here. So the second of the outlines here then was uh, the necessity of, the, of, of reflecting on the cause of this kind of confusion. Um, and the, the root text from the second half of verse 27 says, even I do not know what is causing me confusion. What is there dwelling inside me? And so here saying like, what is this that is kind of causing me this confusion? What is deceiving me? Uh, I really I can't understand that this. What it is that is within my system uh, that is, is kind of like causing this, this kind of crazy kind of idiotic confusion. Um, the only thing I know is that like it's, you know, I mean, it's like I'm being blinded from the actuality of the situation. I, I cannot see uh, reality. Um, I, I don't know what uh, my confusion is, but all I know is that it certainly exists. It's, it certainly is there. Saba. Right? And your mom 
and so really it's it's kind of like this blindness that we talk about this uh, is not knowing this ignorance this confusion it, it really is kind of because um, it leads us into accumulating negative virtue and so we really have to uh, recognize that first and foremost and uh, a, a key part in that is conscientiousness so this uh, third uh, set of outlines uh, starts with um, the engaging in conscientiousness as a means of overcoming mental affliction. And this has, a, again, three subheadings. The first of these is to reflect on the faultiness of mental affliction. The second thing is to uh, really show how inappropriate it is to be despondent or uh, discouraged at the difficulty of overcoming mental affliction. And thirdly, saying with effort, abandonment comes. Therefore, uh, when we have the kind of recognition that we have the capacity to overcome our mental affliction, it's good to habituate to rejoicing in that power that you have. <laughs> Nobody <clears throat> so um the the first of um uh the the three subheads that is how um reflecting on the fault of mental affliction or the faultiness of mental affliction it again has three subheadings the first of these is how um, mental afflictions cause harm uh, to us, how we, you know, reflecting on how this uh, occurs. And so it basically is saying that, you know, mental affliction acts as somebody who kind of exhorts us into non-virtue. And, um, and this, of course, the, the non-virtue imprint that results from that is, is, uh, has to ripen as harm, uh, suffering to either body or mind or both. What <laughs> So the, the second of these subheadings of the first again is um, how uh, reflecting on how uh, mental afflictions uh, harm us. Uh, secondly, uh, how it is incorrect to have uh, patience with mental affliction. And thirdly, uh, in order to overcome mental affliction, one needs to generate a, a powerful uh, mind or a, a courageous attitude. Ta 
<clears throat> and so that um, with regard to the first of the subheadings, that is um, how uh, looking at the uh, the reason why, uh, sorry, uh, reflecting on how mental afflictions harm us, uh, this again has four uh, subheadings. Uh, the first is operating powerlessly. And so it's kind of like so saying how, um, you know, we, in the face of um, mental afflictions, seem to have no uh, power. But then the fact is that the mental afflictions themselves are kind of uh, operating in, 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 in their own way. They have uh, no power. And so it's kind of like we have to, uh, to really uh, see how we can really overcome them and see that it is possible. And then um, the second of these uh, subheadings is that um, the experience, we must experience the effects of limitless uh, suffering. And so even though this is the case, you know, that, uh, you know, mental afflictions are the, the kind of like a, the cause of, uh, of all this suffering. There's nothing else that you can point a finger at. And, you know, we kind of talk about uh, the freedom uh, in this world, you know, freedom fighters and those who are looking for freedom and so on. So if you really, uh, you know, real freedom is freedom from mental affliction, isn't it? And so therefore a real freedom fighter is somebody who fights against their mental affliction. And uh, in this way, recognizing that you know, it is the source of uh, countless limitless suffering. Uh, therefore, uh, that's a reason enough to fight against, uh, uh, tooth and nail against uh, any, any, any appearance of mental affliction. The third of the subheadings is saying that this harm, this, this has gone on uh, an endless length of time as well. It's not just something that you know you have experienced over one or two or ten years, but it, it goes from eon to eon like that, and has gone from eon to eon. So you're recognizing uh, that, you know. So here you're, you're building up a, 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 an irrefutable case against mental affliction. So therefore, the fourth. Men, the fourth subheading is therefore, you know, it is completely inappropriate to kind of be friends with your mentally mental affliction, to cuddle up to your mental affliction. so the first of these uh, subheadings was uh, uh, operating powerlessly. And verse number 28 will make this more clear. Although enemies such as hatred and craving are, have neither any arms nor legs and are neither courageous nor wise, how have I been used like a slave by them? <laughs> Nyomoba dade dage 
ตะตาละอันนี้จึงกังวัตตาเจบาละสวะลักวะกังวัตตาลักวะกังลาเจบาตาลักวะตาอันนี้จึงอันนี้จึงเอ่อเดนดูกะชนจาละสวะเดนด
Nyomo what it, drag it dry you mother watch over chenet, and it is your mother mother. Watch it too, what you want to do with another drop of the shop. Nyomo what it, drag it dry So we have to recognize here that, you know, we have been making a profound mistake uh, and it's been going on since the beginning of this time that, uh, you know, in being under such control of the mental afflictions, we make choices motivated by mental afflictions, which we think are going to bring us benefit, going to bring us happiness. But this never is the case. It always ends up as suffering, you know, and we kind of have to kind of at some stage kind of cop on to this. This is something that is so clear. It's like we're, we're kind of, and we've been blind to it. And later on in, in this very text, in the body's way of life, we hear about, you know, these the, the disadvantages and the kind of a debilitating aspects of self-cherishing as compared to cherishing others. And how self-cherishing, of course, is a, driven by mental affliction. And this has been going on since beginning this time. And that like, if we had really been able to recognize what was going on uh, back then, uh, you know, we would have made such a huge difference in our lives. Because look at, look at the, the enlightened Buddhas and look at the difference between them and ourselves because they made the right choices. choices. They recognized the debilitating effects of mental affliction and transformed their lives. And uh, we're still here. So we kind of have to see uh, the, the kind of really negative aspect of mental affliction, the damaging, harmful aspect of mental affliction that keeps us in a state of suffering in cyclic existence with no hope of liberation. And so here now uh, we have the best opportunity to do something about that because we have the intelligence to be able to see the error of our ways. We have the intelligence to clearly, unequivocally uh, see the mental afflictions as the enemy and therefore to begin the process of uh, eradicating the enemy in our, in our internal enemy and to begin a new chapter. In <laughs> So we have to recognize that, that we need to abandon uh, our mental affliction. If we fail to abandon our mental affliction, uh, the only thing we can expect is more suffering and, and loss of it. So here then is to uh, look at the second of these subheadings. That is how we experience limitless suffering because of mental affliction. Verses uh, 29, 30 and 31. For a while they dwell within my mind, at their pleasure they cause me harm. Yes, I patiently endure them without any anger, but this is an inappropriate and shameful time for patience. Should even all the gods and anti-gods rise up against me as my enemies? They could not lead nor place me in the roaring fires of deepest hell. But the mighty foe, these disturbing conceptions, in a moment can cast me amidst these flames, which when met will cause not even the ashes of the king of mountains to remain. Tame 
ตะครั้งเตวายยบะเชนเนเนวะเกเนตอติกยอดะติละตอนนั้นกายมาจิบะเชนตอนนั้นกายจิกยอมาโอตะติกยอจะยุบยอสวะติกงอติกยอนตะ
uh, why me? Why is this happening to me? No reflection on on the time of the cause of how, when this was laid down, how it was laid down, and the role that mental affliction played in uh, the very thing that you're experiencing now. And so it's kind of like really have to to understand how uh, mental affliction leads us uh, to engage in negative karma, which leads us to the hells and all other sufferings. It's like saying here, you know, this mental afflictions. It's kind of like abiding in my system like that. It's like, and at their whim, they are condemning me uh, to sufferings, such as sufferings in the hells, etc., etc., etc. You know, I, this is the, the way it is. But to here, I have no kind of like anger, never, not even kind of paying attention to that. No, <laughs> but I have no kind of aversion or anger uh, towards them and seem, seemingly have endless patience for my mental afflictions and saying, Master Shanti Devi said, this is not the time uh, for, for patience. This is really reprehensible thinking, shameful uh, thinking. Uh, and so it's kind of like really, you know, pointing out that uh, this is not the, the time uh, for patience. And so kind of like from our point of view, you know, patience is the uh, time when we uh, are really able to understand that uh, we accept uh, the harm that is in, occurring. Uh, we we kind of like really have a, a means of being able to live with that uh, ourselves, but not uh, patience towards our mental afflictions. And so that um, we are patients using patience in the purpose for benefiting all kind mother sentient beings or fulfilling. Uh, the purpose of ourselves and others to attain enlightenment, applying patience in that regard, of course, is, is perfectly appropriate. But here, no. And uh, it's this thing of really finally waking up to the fact that uh, mental afflictions are only out to harm, therefore uh, can't have patience towards them. And it should be the process of, you know, really overcoming, destroying our mental afflictions, you know, with extreme uh, prejudice, in fact. ちょっとこれでちょっとこれでだかじゃ <laughs> ヨバヨバでマス、ヨバマチェス、ワタカジャジェ、テロコガマチェス、コガテジョマレス、ワタミジャカジャジェ、ノモンディ、アネカリンバドモトバチェネ、エネディ、シャワンドマトワチェット。
So when we talk about the uh, mental afflictions, uh, that this is not time for patience with regard when regarding mental afflictions. Of course, it's not encouraging us, therefore, to be generating anger towards our uh, mental afflictions. Uh, this is a, uh, this would be counterproductive says uh, anger itself is a, a mental affliction, of course. What it is really telling us is here, you know, don't be patient uh, to kind of blind you to the, uh, the which blinds you to the, the negative element of mental afflictions. Um, but uh, it is really exhorting us never to give an opportunity uh, to the mental afflictions uh, to uh, arise, you know, to thrive or to uh, arise. And so it's very important here. So it's kind of like one is saying, this is really saying, recognize mental affliction for what it is. Do not fall under the influence of mental afflictive thinking and then uh, overcome them. Do not give them the opportunity to arise, kind of like um, uh, really strangle them of the oxygen they need to have a big influence over your life. So it's kind of saying here too, in, a, in the following verse, say, if all the the gods and anti-gods of the all sentient beings of the six realms we could say all arise up as one as my enemy uh, then uh, as long as i did not fall under the influence of mental affliction at that time uh, they do not have the capacity or ability to lead me to uh, the hell without respite or the lower realms they don't have it uh, if i can keep keep calm at that point and, and they don't have the, the ability. But this mighty foe, these disturbing conceptions saying mm -hmm. that when, when these are met, they can in a moment, you know, uh, lead me into the, uh, the kind of hell without respite, place in which even the, uh, the ashes of the king of mountains cannot remain. And so it's kind of saying here, recognize, the mental afflictions as the enemy and see the necessity of completely abandoning those mental afflictions. What did it do? What did it ロアだかでたでディスオエドワーテチケえ、カソデセムジャタムジャソソジャラマイバイナソソニョモマケバイナカセネウケバイネソソセデメバソトゴワティラチェトヨマロワタニョモスンディケバイナアノソソケバネケ
from whatever source, if we maintain our equilibrium and equanimity, we do not allow mental affliction to arise, then they can't uh, generate harmful causes in our mind stream. But if we do, you know, and we have to recognize that this is the case that has been from eon to eon to eon, we have laid down negative causes motivated by mental affliction in our mind stream. And this is how, you know, has created uh, so much harm for us and never, ever benefit. And so, you know, if we have an, a normal, ordinary, mundane enemy, you know, somebody, you know, even if they harm us, you know, it, it is the case. Sometimes it, there's a kind of a, can be a side effect where there's some benefit to that harm, you know. Uh, but, and also, you know, somebody who has been our enemy and very harmful to us can change over time. Uh, we can have a very different, more positive, beneficial relationship with them later on. Happens all the time. But mental affliction never behaves like that. Mental affliction can only bring harm. There's no beneficial side effect. Mental affliction is kind of harmed, you know, completely. So, in a situation, for example, where uh, due to previous negative causes laid down uh, by the by being motivated by mental affliction, uh, harm arises for us now in this life, this life of a precious human rebirth with pleasures and endowments, and, and that we may be with our recognition of this. Uh, the cause and effect of this, we may recognize how to take on this suffering onto the path and therefore bring benefit from that. But this is not related to, you know, the mental fiction. They don't take any credit uh, for this. This is from our ability to use the, our mind training to, to take that onto the path and therefore make benefit out of that suffering. What Right? But so therefore, um, in terms of um, mental affliction, initially uh, to understand that, yes, as beginners, of course, we have mental affliction uh, is very much present in our day-to-day -day lives. And what is absolutely key is that we 
uh, must not fall under the control or the sway of our mental afflictive thinking. And it's uh, very, very important to see uh, by seeing the fault of that kind of thinking uh, that we then see a way of overcoming or abandoning uh, that way of thinking. Now, uh, this can be in the case of totally uprooting uh, the main issues of mental affliction so that they never return or to seek to avoid them arising uh, as, they, uh, as they do. So we have uh, you know, this presentation of mental affliction from the three poisonous attitudes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But they all come back to uh, the, uh, the, the grasping at the true existence of a self entity. And this is the root cause. And that uh, you know, we have to develop then the wisdom which uh, sees selflessness, realizing selflessness as the direct antidote to that. And so recognizing you know, how uh, this self grasping uh, acts as the root of all mental affliction, because from that, and then arises the uh, attachment and aversion, uh, of, of course. And then from that, then we engage in negativities motivated by that, laying down those negative imprints on our mind, etc., 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 leading to all our suffering. And so we have to kind of work then to uproot the root cause, the root mental affliction, uh, which is this uh, grasping at the true existence of a self entity by uh, developing the wisdom realizing selflessness. Pastor, but nobody will do tie of us, right? Do tie of one, it's our letter. Taja no more trouble, huh? You didn't do them to them, never done. Taja could get that up, you didn't talk about my innocent. The third of those subheadings was uh, that harm occurring over a limitless time. And so, verse number 32 uh, reads, all other enemies are incapable of remaining for such a length of time as can my disturbing conceptions, the enduring enemy with neither beginning nor end. Penachacha,那,小给,别什么,地气的,呃,所有,当,都跟,其,啊,那,等,那,接着,谢,当,其,其,其,其,其,其,其,其,其,其,其,其,其,其,其,其,其,其,其,其,其,其,其,其,其,
and then due to uh, just basically a conversation they've had, disagreement, uh, the one becomes the enemy of the other. And, uh, and that uh, later on, you know, somebody can take the other's life or they feel that their life is in danger because of the, the distance between them now. You know, this very common happens. But uh, this, is, this is kind of made, if the, the enemy here uh, is not the other. The enemy is the mental affliction that has made an enemy of the friend. And so this has to be recognized where the, the fault lies. So we have to kind of um, uh, eradicate. If you, you know, talk about eradicating enemy, we're talking about eradicating mental affliction. And it's saying here too that, you know, the enemy of mental affliction, um, it's, it's no beginning or end. It's kind of like stays around forever, not like uh, a worldly enemy, uh, an enemy in the world, and that uh, they don't have the ability to remain for as long uh, as enemies as the mental afflictions can. Therefore, we have to make efforts to really overcome our mental afflictions. Rua, <laughs> And and so we can see uh, so many examples of the kind of like the influence of mental afflictions uh, on the TV. You know, we kind of see, you know, that, uh, that how mental affliction is such a, a big fault, creates this kind of a confusion in the mind, which uh, then proceeds into you know, incorrect actions following on from that. And that can lead to all kinds of, of trouble, you know, whether it's in a show that we're looking at or even on the news in reality, we can see, you know, the, the, the kind of uh, the, um, the, the process by which uh, uh, thieves are dealt with, murderers and so on, uh, the, the prisons, uh, going into the prisons and so on, or even people who, you know, have been very well known, very kind of like famous and, uh, and, and had lots of respect and lots of power, uh, even in their 70s and so on, later on, found that they did the wrong thing uh, much earlier in life. And this has come to light and therefore they'll lose all of what they have and end up in prison. It's kind of like common. But you see, what is the, the real issue here? It's the, 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 the falling under the influence of mental affliction. Which kind of this confused kind of then basis leads to uh, unskillful actions uh, and that are going to run foul of, of uh, the law and ultimately, of course, uh, can send us to the lower realms. Oh, yeah. Okay, sorry, I can't leave it there for today. I think I've, I've, uh, my day has just become quite busy. 
<笑>我的这个所做家也是把这边的人说了 so uh just to, to, to leave with the, the main issue here is kind of like in the process of uh overcoming your mental affliction of course mm -hmm. uh the main issue is still like to make this life meaningful same thing in order to make this life meaningful therefore you have to deal with the uh, mental afflictions ま、だ、だんだんこれ、ちぼら、ちぼさ、どめながら、ラマトベオンボコンピアティ、あ、ランキチワペマニマタベテコマシェ、アニテテンチェンタルパデサベラマトモテタキチワペマカジョクソトジ
uh, then uh, arrives at the pre-prepared seas and we have the certainty again that they will remain until we attain uh, the state of enlightenment and um, we rejoice in that and then uh, the, 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 the petals of the lotus fold over are sealed by uh, five pounds of uh, white semi-vadra uh, then the, the mantras uh, start to enfold uh, the, the lotus the clockwise uh, uh, unfolding mantra of the main mantra of Shakyamuni Buddha, the anti-clockwise of uh, the mantra of Mantrashri, and the clockwise again of the mantra of dependent uh, origination. Mm. <laughs> So and so then light rays start to emanate from the, uh, the figures of the Buddha within the uh, lotus petals and they emanating powerfully from body, speech and mind. They permeate uh, through every cell of our bodies from the crown of the head to the soles of the feet. And that uh, here they begin the process of an intense, uh, intensely efficient purification of any negativities that we've accumulated since beginning this time and all obscurations along with those uh, the negativities associated uh, with the 10 non-virtues of, of the killing, stealing and sexual misconduct related to physical uh, negativities, the lying, harsh speech, divisive speech and gossip related to verbal and the covetousness, malicious intent and wrong view related to mentally accrued negativities. Uh, then all infractions and downfalls related to either the Pratimaksha vows or the Bodhisattva vows or the Tantric vows are completely and utterly purified and rectified. And then all of the ordinary or naturally occurring negativities, uh, uh, as well as that, any which is being proscribed by the Buddhas, uh, the, the kind of negativities uh, of that we have engaged in ourselves, that we have exhorted others to engage in that we have rejoiced in the doing of uh, all aspects of negativity like that are purified imbalances in our uh, in our elements uh, in a kind of a, a in our channels wings and drops uh, negativities that give rise to any physical illness or uh, suffering or disease any uh, negativities giving rise to any mental disease or discomfort all of these are completely uh, and utterly purified. <laughs> And through the combination of my own most subtle wind acting as the substantial cause together with the body of the Buddha acting as the cooperative conditions, my own body is transformed into the enlightened body of the Buddha. And then through the combination of my own most subtle mind acting as the substantial cause together with the mind of the Buddha acting as the cooperative conditions, my own mind is transformed into the enlightened mind of Buddha. And thereby I see my body, speech, and mind as being inseparable from the body, speech, and mind of the Buddha, of an enlightened being. And this, of course, leads me to uh, develop a sense of bliss, which transforms into, combined with emptiness, and I abide in the wisdom of non-dual bliss and emptiness. Uh, likewise, the, the place 
uh, that I am in is transformed of all faults and becomes a perfect uh, enlightened abode. <clears throat> ตาอะไรละมาชาจะสิงกูกูตุตงโหยเมจูวะเตอะนาละรังชิมเมมาซัมซะเตทูกาเลอะนาละมาชาจะสิงกูปาตุเมมาจุนอะนี่ทายเม
As well as Vajrapani, destroyer of hosts of demons without exception. Song Kappa, crown jewel of the sages of the land of snow. Go, Sangjakra, at your feet, Amen. 